This video is about building a digital site model with SketchUp, Google Earth, and Google Maps. This is an example of a little model that I built using the technique that I'll teach in this video. These are massing model versions of buildings surrounding a theoretical site. If I flip on the photo scene, you'll see that these models are actually based on photo textured versions that I got from the SketchUp 3D warehouse. These are actually the same 3D models uh, with photo textures that appear in Google Earth. All right, we've got a lot of ground to cover, so let's get started. Here we are in SketchUp 2013. Before we do anything in this program, though, let's take a look at Google Earth. Now, Google Earth is a program lots of people are familiar with, but a lot of architects don't realize that it's possible to do quite a bit of really valuable site research here in Earth as well. So I'm going to fly to the location of a theoretical site that I picked in Denver, Colorado. It's a parking lot kind of sitting on half a city block between several existing buildings. Uh, it's actually right here. So big convention center and there's a big Hyatt Hotel here and this is the site that we're theoretically thinking about building something on here now. If you've used Google Earth recently, that is to say in the first half of 2013, you'll notice that Google actually changed the way that it models existing 3D buildings. It went to a system whereby it flies planes through the air and takes pictures and uses lasers to build models. They look fine from a distance, but if you get up close, you'll see that it actually looks like there was maybe a major earthquake or something that happened. If you remember using Google Earth before, you'll, you'll recall that the quality used to be much better. The good news is there's actually a way to get back that good quality uh, in Google Earth. Here's what you do. On a Mac, you go to Google Earth and Preferences right there. On Windows it's actually under a different menu. I believe it's called Options and I think it's under the Tools menu. Regardless, if you say Use 3D Imagery, that is disable to use Legacy 3D Buildings, if you uncheck that option and say OK, you'll notice that Google Earth actually reloads with a ton of really really nice buildings. Now of course this is only going to work if you've got the 3D Buildings layer with the photorealistic buildings enabled uh, right here in Google Earth. All right, so you'll notice now that those buildings, rather than looking kind of lousy and broken, they actually look nice and sharp. The other nice thing about these buildings is, of course, they were made by people. So if I were to click, let's say, on this hotel and then look at that model, I not only get information about the model, including its height and when it was built, things like that, um, I actually get a link to the, to the model file in the 3D warehouse, which is really useful. All right, let's take at, uh, a look at Google Maps because there's another piece of visualization functionality that I'd like you to take a look at. What I want to do is I want to go to the same place in Google Maps. Um, I don't want to have to go and hunt for it like I was in Google Earth, though. There's a really nice little trick I'll show you. Let's get looking at the thing I want to be looking at in Google Earth, and then right up here in the Edit menu, I'm going to find the option to Copy View Location right there. And when I do that, it copies to my pasteboard, or my clipboard on my computer, the latitude and longitude, that is to say the coordinates that I want to be looking at. I'll just go ahead and paste those into the search field in Google Maps. And lo and behold, I actually get a view of exactly what I wanted to look at right there. Now, I'm going to go to a satellite view of that location. There it is. And the reason I'm here in Google Maps is because there's actually a type of imagery that Maps shows that Google Earth doesn't show. And that is 45 degree imagery. So notice that we're actually looking at this from a bird's eye point of view. I can get an awful lot of information about the buildings surrounding my site using this type of imagery that I can't get from Google Earth. So that's another resource that I want to be looking at. The third type of imagery resource that I can use as an architect to scout my site is street view data. So right here in Google Earth I get this little street view uh, orange man on a green dot. If I drag him and just set him down on a blue road you'll notice we enter street view and now I'm actually in a mode where I can look around at my site from a first person street level point of view. And this imagery of course is captured by Google with their street view vehicles that drive around we can actually see that this imagery was from July of 2011. If I exit Street View, you'll see that the aerial imagery for this site was captured 
October 7th of 2012. And so Google's actually done a really nice thing by telling us exactly when this imagery is from. Go ahead and turn off that site. All right, so that's a little overview of the existing resources that uh, you should know about that you can do a little bit of site research on without having to set foot outside of your office. Back here in SketchUp, I've got pretty much nothing to begin with. I've got Derek and the axes and nothing much else. What I need to do to begin with is bring in what's called a geo snapshot. That's a piece of the world. I'm going to go up here to my Add Location tool. It looks like a folded map. If you prefer to use the menus, you can always say File, Geo Location, Add Location. What ends up opening is something that looks a lot like Google Maps. It's asking us to go and find something. I'm just going to paste in the coordinates that I had copied out of Google Earth before and hit enter and zoom back a little ways and there's actually the site that we are considering right there. I'm going to click the select region button in the upper right corner and I'm just going to use these blue pins to actually grab myself a piece of the world. So let's do that and then I'll hit grab which is a button right there. Now. When I do that, it actually plunks this geo snapshot right back down in the middle of my SketchUp model. Now, I know a few things. I know it's at the actual scale because there's Derek standing in the middle of it. It's actually accurate to north, uh, which means a couple of things. Most importantly, if I were to, let's say, just make a little block on here and then I went in here and showed my shadows and scrubbed those shadows around, let's just sort of change the time of the day. The shadow, using SketchUp Shadows Engine, is automatically going to be accurate for this location right now because the coordinates came in at the same time that the aerial imagery did, which is actually kind of neat. Let's just get rid of all that building. Okay, and the other thing that we got at the same time, and you can't really see it on this site, is we got a three-dimensional version of that terrain at the same time that we got the aerial imagery. Now, this is such a flat site that you really can't tell it, talk, see it toggling very well. But you can take my word for it that it is. So I got a 3D version of the terrain and I got a 2D version of the terrain. Obviously what I also got is some nice aerial imagery for this site. Do you remember when we were back there in Google Earth, we actually saw that there were some really nice 3D buildings available for this site right around here. Wouldn't it be nice if we could leverage these buildings, if we could actually bring them into SketchUp instead of having to model them all ourselves? There's a really nice way to do that. I'm going to go to Window and Components. And then right here, next to the little house button, there's a button labeled Navigation. If I click on that and choose Nearby Models, what this is doing is it's going out and searching the 3D warehouse for any 3D models that are geolocated within the vicinity of this snapshot that I was looking for. So here's the Colorado Convention Center, the Denver Pavilions, the Quest Building, here's the Hyatt Regency now. I know that I need the Hyatt, right, because I recognize that building. So I'll just click on this little... Uh, thumbnail right there. When I click on that, you'll see that building actually downloads from the internet and appears right here in my model. And not only that, it appears exactly where it's supposed to do be in the model. This model was uh, built a few years ago, so it's a little bit unique. You'll notice that any building that was made a little while ago also comes in with a black and white snapshot uh, kind of pasted to the bottom of it. If you're in here, you can click on that component and then we're going to double click to edit it. And then you'll see that I can click on that black and white thing. I'm just going to go ahead and erase it because we don't need it for this exercise. I'll just get rid of that. All right. So there's that building. Now, I don't know what other buildings I need, right? I don't, I'm not familiar with the area, let's say, so I don't know what these are called. I may well need these buildings, but I'm not exactly sure. Here's where I'm going to jump back to Google Earth and I'm going to do a little bit of research. So I know this building is one that I need. That is called 616th Street. I'm actually just going to copy that right there. And let's go back over to SketchUp. I'm going to kind of scroll down. I'm not seeing that building appearing here, but this is what I can do. I can just go into this little search field, paste in the title of the model that I got from Google Earth and hit enter. That searched the 3D warehouse for that building and, and look at this 616th Street it's right there let's just click on that and you'll see that that one came in there as well 
So you get the idea, right? We can go through and methodically we can download all of the buildings we need. There you go, I've downloaded all the buildings that are available that sort of border my site here. There is one glaring omission though, this one here with the white roof. It's probably newer, um, maybe nobody's got around to modeling it yet, it's hard to say. Let's just double check Earth to see if it's available there. You see in the detailed high quality 3D model view, it's actually missing as well. One more place we can check is we can turn on that uh, default 3D imagery, that is to say the low quality stuff, and see if anything shows up there. Let's take a look. You'll see that it actually is modeled using the low quality high coverage method there. It's useful from one point of view. We can see how tall it is. It's as tall as the adjacent building. So that's a that's a useful piece of information. Let's go back to SketchUp. Um, first order of business here is actually to trace this outline. So I'm going to get the line tool, or I could hit L on my keyboard, and I can start to trace. Now, it would be really nice if these lines lined up with the default model axes, but Denver's rotated about 45 degrees. Uh, I could fake it, or I can just go ahead and change the model axes orientation right now. I'll show you how to do that. Let's go to Tools. Oops, Tools and Axes right there. That gets me the Axes tool. I'm going to click on an origin. Let's just choose this one here. I'm going to say this is the red direction, that is the green direction. And now what I've done is I've reoriented the model axes to line up with the orientation of the city block here. Let's go and get that line tool again. And I'm just going to start tracing. I'm going to say I want to come about as far as this. Let's come out. Actually, maybe I didn't want to come out quite that far. Let's kind of kick this back a little. Let's go out this far, over here in the red. Let's go back in the green, let's go back in the red in this direction right here until we hit that corner. Now what we've got is a face that represents the footprint of that building. I want to go and get my push-pull tool. Let's just click to extrude it. Now we learned from the little bit of research we just did in Earth that it's the same height as this adjacent building. So I'll just hover on the adjacent building and click and I've matched the height. And uh, now I have a little block on the site that represents that building. Wouldn't it be nice if I could use some imagery um, to actually photo texture the sides of this building too so that it would match the rest of this site? Well, I actually can. It's pretty easy. Remember that street view imagery that we were looking at before? We have access to that in SketchUp, so let's do that. I'm going to click on the face that I'm interested in photo texturing, that is painting with the photograph. I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to say add photo texture and when I do that what ends up opening is a photo textures dialog and there's a lot of information here for you I'm going to say start photo texturing just like that and what you notice is that street view imagery has appeared right here inside of SketchUp now I'm a little close to the building to capture anything useful so I think what I'll do is I'll just drag my little man over here and now you'll see that I'm a little farther away from the building. I'm going to fly myself one more photograph in that direction. You'll see there's the side of the building that I need. I'm going to hit the Select Region button in the upper right corner. And just drag this, just like this. And then I'm going to crop the part of the photograph that I'm interested in grabbing for the purposes of building my model here. And you could be precise about this. You can be imprecise. It's kind of all up to you. But you get the idea. I've cropped a rectangle in perspective. Let's say grab. I'll get rid of this dialog. And there is the photograph from Street View mapped directly onto the model that I'm working on. Let's go ahead and do this face at the same time. Let's click on it. Right click. Say add photo texture. Once again, it's shown me the right building, but I'm a little bit too close. I'm in luck. There's a parking lot across the street from this as well, so I'll just drag my point of view back a little ways. Let's actually fly up against traffic just like this. And I can fly up and take a look at that. Uh, let's just fly up one more and see if we can get a better view. No, it doesn't look like it. I think we need to head back in the other direction. So we'll fly back this way. We'll take a look over here. Just like this. Now, I can always go in and Photoshop and act or some other image editor and just take away these poles. Let's go to Select Region. Let's grab a piece right here. I'm getting a piece of bus. I'm getting a piece of light post. 
getting all kinds of things. But again, this is quick and dirty. Let's just crop the part that I want right there and say grab. We'll get rid of this. And you can see that I grabbed the piece of building that I need and mapped it to the side of the building. And that, actually, that doesn't complete the building because, look, we actually need a top of roof surface as well. The way to get that is actually pretty simple as well. We're going to go up and we're going to get the paint bucket tool right there. And when we do that, we can actually modify the paint bucket to turn into a sampling tool by hitting and holding Command on a Mac, or uh, I believe it's Alt on the PC. So Command on the Mac, Alt on the PC. We're just going to sample the photograph that we brought in in that very first step, and then we're just going to click over here on the roof of the building. So even though we sampled from here and we clicked over here, it's basically just using whatever part of the photograph is directly below this building here um, to paint it with. So there's no magic involved. That photograph looks like this underneath, and it's just brought it up to the top of the building, just like that. Uh, once I've gone through that, I think I'll just select that whole building I just made, and I'll right-click on it, and I'll say make that a component. In this case, maybe I'll just call it New Building, and say Create. And now it's a component like every other building in this model is a component. So now what I have is a model of the buildings that I'm interested in using as context. And we'll move on to the next step. I've added a little bit more geometric detail to that building that we just made using the Street View textures. What we want to do in this step is create a, in this case, white or gray massing version of these buildings. The idea being that all this photographic detail in these buildings is going to compete with whatever I decide to put on this site, at least initially. It's certain that uh, I'm not going to use photo textures in my design. I probably just want this context to look as simple as possible. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate these buildings and I'm going to make um, versions, basically white versions of those duplicates. First thing I'm going to do though is I'm going to go up to Styles, I'm going to go to Edit, uh, and I'm going to choose to edit my face styles. I'm going to switch from this photo textured style to just a colored style. That's going to help sketch up in my computer out a little bit if it's struggling to keep up with all the photo textures in my model. Now it's just colors that I have to deal with instead of photographs. That's easier for it to deal with. These buildings are all components. Uh, what I need to do is put them on their own layer as a first step. So let's do that. Let's go up here to window and layers and I'll make myself a new layer and I'll call that layer context buildings just like that and I'll say return now simply creating that layer didn't actually put them on that layer I have to right click on the buildings and say entity info and then I have to say what layer I'd like them to be on so I'd like to be on the context layer I'm gonna toggle that turn them on and off just to make sure it did what I thought it was going to do the next thing I need to do is just reselect those buildings. Here we go. I'll go up and I'll say Edit, Copy. What it's doing is it's just making a copy of those buildings to the system memory. And then I'm going to go up and say Edit, Paste in Place. In this case, Paste in Place. Paste won't put them back where they belong. Paste in Place will put them back exactly where they belong. We'll go Paste in Place. Now I actually have those duplicates selected. What I can do is I can select one of each of those duplicates just like that and I'm going to make myself another layer called massing models or massing buildings there's a very cool trick uh, right here in entity info I can create a new layer and put everything that I've selected on it all at once by uh, just typing a new layer right here into this field so we'll go like that notice it made a brand new layer called massing buildings if I turn that layer off and turn off context buildings you'll see that it did exactly what I wanted. Now I have duplicates of those components on this massing buildings layer right there. Okay, these are components though, so anything I do to one instance of this, let's say, building is going to happen to the other instance as well, which is to say that if I paint this thing white, the other one's going to get painted white too. So I need to break the connection between this instance and the other instance, and the way I'm going to do that is just right-click on that, and I'm going to say Make Unique. And when I do that, it breaks the connection between this component instance and the other component instance on the other layer. Let's just go through. We're making these unique. 
There we go. Did we do this one already? Nope. Make unique. And this one we already did. All right, so we've made unique copies of all of those buildings. Now let's dive in and actually paint them white. This building uh, is a great example of an older Google Earth model. Notice that it doesn't have any edges on it. It actually came in from the 3D warehouse this way. It's an example of uh, a technology period before Earth was able to handle models with black edges on them. So the modeler, uh, him or herself, actually had to go in and manually hide the edges on the model. For our purposes, we want those edges to be visible because otherwise the model won't be visible at all on a white background. So this is what we do. Take the Select tool, double-click on the component to um, so that we're just, just looking at that component in isolation. Let's triple-click on the component to select absolutely everything inside of that model. That, or we could say Command-A or Control-A on a PC to select everything inside the component. And what actually was selected at that point was more than just the faces that I wanted. It actually selected this little Hyatt logo. I'm just going to delete that because I don't need it. Let's go ahead and do that again, and we'll just select All. And uh, I can actually just right click on this thing and say, nope, I can't say unhide because there's nothing to unhide. What I need to do is go up to view and say, I want to see the hidden geometry. The hidden geometry consists of all of those edges that were actually hidden. Now that I can see them, let's reselect everything again. Notice that I selected the edges and the faces. We'll right click on that and say unhide. And go up and turn off hidden geometry. And you'll see what we got. We actually ended up with all of the edges that had been hidden in that model. Really valuable tip. Let's do that again. Let's select all. But this time what I'd like to do is I want to paint the whole thing white. I'm going to go up to my paint bucket. I get my colors or materials depending on operating system you're in. I'm going to go up to my library of colors in model. And the very first color in that list is this thing called the default material. It's almost always sort of half grayish purple and half white. I could paint this whole building white, but I want to paint it with the default material, and I'll, I'll show you why in a little bit. Let's just click on that default material. While this whole model is selected, I'm just going to click once on it and turn it white, just like that. So let's repeat the process for these other buildings. Let's kind of just head over here like that. Double click, select everything, get the paint bucket, select that default material, and click, and repeat the process. Zoom out a little ways, right up here. We'll double click on this model. I'm going to select everything inside of it. We'll go over here to my paint bucket, grab that default material, and paint it on. And just check our work. Now, you'll notice that there are actually some objects in here that did not get painted. And in this case, these escalators are not something that I want, so I'm actually just going to delete them because they're not important to me from a context point of view. Let's actually do the same thing over here. Doop, we'll get rid of that one and that one, but you'll see there are some other materials, like let's say this one. The reason for that is they're probably mapped to the back side of these faces. So let's just go ahead and select everything again. We'll grab the paint bucket, default material, and we'll paint anything that isn't already white click just like that. And now that's become the default material too. If I click out here, you'll see what actually happened. So let's click out there. We'll click over here to deselect it. And now I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing to the other buildings in the model. Here I've painted all the buildings white in the model. There's one little condition that I think it's worth mentioning. Uh, if you look at this building right here, you'll notice that there are no edges appearing where these two faces meet. And the reason for that is pretty simple. If I dive in here and get rid of, let's say, this face just temporarily, you'll see that this mass is intersecting this mass, um, but the face is intersecting the face. There's no edge there. I could dive into the geometry and actually see if I could fix that, but there's a faster way. This is how I'm going to do it. Let's just undo to get that face back. All I really want is for the edges that define the, the boundary between these two faces to appear. So I'm just going to click on this face right there, and I'm going to right-click on it and say Intersect Faces with Model, in this case, right there. And what that's done is it's automatically drawn an edge everywhere that face intersected with another face. Actually, that wasn't great because 
in reality, it also drew this edges. Now those edges come from the building that's actually adjacent to it, the new building that we modeled. We probably didn't want those edges to appear on that building. So let's actually go back one step. I'm going to click on that face again, right click on it, and say intersect faces. Instead of with model, I'm just going to do with context, which will uh, limit the faces SketchUp is looking at for this operation to just the ones inside of this component right now. So we'll go with context, and that gives us the effect we want. Let's click out. Excellent. And uh, all right. So I think the next thing we want to do at this point is trace some streets on the model. And we're just going to use the aerial imagery that we have on this geo snapshot to do that. Uh, maybe I'll actually turn off the buildings at this point because the buildings are sort of hindering my ability to be able to see what's going on. So I'll go up to layers. I'm going to turn off those massing buildings. You'll see that I renamed that layer something a little bit clearer uh, in the interim. Let's turn that off. But I do want to keep that snapshot. Let's just go back over here to layers and um, let's do something. Now, remember how those axes were reoriented in order to draw the building that was over here? I reset them in the interim, but let's go ahead and actually set those axes up so that it's easier to draw these roads again as well. So we're going to go to Tools, we'll go to Axes, I'm going to find a road that looks nice and straight and seems oriented to the grid. Uh, this right here looks good. I'll click there, I'm going to say this will be my red axis, this will be my green axis. Notice that I want to make sure that that blue axis is pointing up. We'll go green. Now I've reoriented those things. And there are quick ways to draw these streets, and there are less quick ways to draw these streets. Uh, I think what I'll do is I'm going to draw a rectangle, I think. So let's just draw a rectangle. Now, if I knew exactly how wide this thing were, I could type in dimensions, but this is just a quick sight model. So let's just, for the sake of argument, say that the road is that thick or that wide. Um, I may just actually erase out the edges of this thing. That's a, the, the end point edges anyway to simplify things. Then I'll go up and get the pencil tool and I'll just extend this. I'm going to extend it all this way. I'm just going to sort of assume that the road continues from there to there. But there's a pretty easy way to check that out. Let's go back to Google Earth and I'm going to go to a street view of this to see if the street actually gets wider or narrower or, or what. Uh, it looks aerially like that looks like this. Let's go to this. I'm just going to set myself down right there. It looks like this is the streetcar that runs this way. Uh, is the curb... Yep, the curb is lined up from side to side right there. Over here it's hard to tell because there's light rail in the way, but it looks to me like the curb lines up on that side as well. So let's go back to SketchUp. It looks like what we did made sense. I'm going to go up and get that line or pencil tool again. Let's just continue on off in this direction. And now let's create some that actually cross this way. So again, I'm just going to use the rectangle tool. We'll come up here. I'm just going to pick an arbitrary spot that seems like it's a good reference. We'll go like that maybe, and we'll come over here, and that seems about right, right there. Again, I'm just going to take my eraser tool, erase away the ends, and um, maybe I'll even extend the lines here that I want just manually using the line tool. There I switch to the line tool using the letter L on my keyboard. I'll go there, come out this way, good, and ba -ba -bum. all right, so we want to deal with this intersection right now. Let's come over here to the eraser, get rid of the eraser, 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 just like that. So we just erased away those four edges which just leaves this intersection. For realism's sake, I think what I'll do is even put in the little radius on the curb. So let's go and get the tape measure. Uh, I find that this is a, a nice way to do this when you have an intersection of four streets. We'll go, that says it's a 24 foot. I'm just going to type in 25 feet at this point because it'll make it a little simpler. Now let's go a 25 foot radius in this direction. Oop, we'll go 25 feet, enter. And it looks like I need those on this side as well. So we'll go over here. That's 25 feet. And let's do another one on this corner as well. 25 feet. 
Now, at this point, it's probably easiest to turn off these photo textures because um, I can't really see the lines I'm working on. So I'll go back up to Styles. I'm going to go to my face styles and I'll switch from this photo textured mode over to this just colored mode. I could even go over here to hidden line which is just black and white. That'll make it easier to see on the video. Now I'll get the arc tool. I can hit arc or I can press A on the keyboard. I'm going to say I want to start here. I want to go here and I'm just going to move this until it turns magenta which tells me that it's tangent to this edge and to that edge. Let's repeat that operation here to here up, tangent, let's go from here, like that, to about there, uh, up, tangent, and let's do, whoops, I clicked in the wrong spot, so I'll hit escape to get myself out of that predicament. We'll go back to magenta, just like that, good. All right, let's get the eraser. We're just going to erase out those edges. And now, uh, let's go back to my styles, because I want to turn on those photo textures again. It looks to me like I actually need... I didn't grab enough context up here. You see that? I don't have enough information to model this intersection, but I need that intersection because this is my site. What I'm going to do is go back to that Add Location tool that we used at the very beginning of the video. Let's just click on that, and I'm going to go and I'm going to use this tool to grab some more context for myself. In this case, I want this corner over here. So I'll just select a region. I'll say that's about what I want. We'll say grab. And look at that. What SketchUp did was that it actually just added this snapshot to that snapshot exactly where it belongs, and it gave me as much information as I need to model this road as well. Let's just repeat that process. We'll take the rectangle tool. I'll zoom in and say this might want to go from here to here. Uh, it's very difficult to see what's going on here, but I'll make a guess and say that it's just to the just to the side of where the cars are, maybe there. Let's go ahead and take that end edges off again. Um, this street isn't intersecting with this street. I think we actually have enough information to switch back to a black and white style, though. Here we go. Let's go to the line tool. Let's just extend those out. Escape to end the line. We'll extend this out to there. All right, escape to clip off that line. And um, for the sake of argument, let's just imagine that these radii here are the same as they are there. So I think I'll take that tool here. This is my tape measure tool, and I'll give myself some more um, line reference lines. So we'll come out here to 25 feet, come out here to 25 feet. And uh, let's just take that arc and finish this up. We'll come from here to here. There we go. We'll go from there to there till I see that magenta. I'm a little confused by what's going on right now, so I'm just going to delete the stuff I know I don't need. Right there and right there. This as well. We'll go to the arc. Go bonk, bonk, er. If you don't get the snap you want, try orbiting around to reorient your view. That's usually the best approach. We're going to go from here to here, and we'll go just like that. We'll get the eraser and erase out those roads, well, at least the, the edges associated with the roads. Let's get that line tool again and extend this out just in case we need it. And uh, I think at this point we can probably erase the guides as well. At this point I could manually erase the guides, or I can go up to Edit and delete guides. It gets rid of all the guides inside my current context. Derek's still standing there, such a trooper. We're gonna delete him though because I don't think we need him in the model at this point. And uh, let's turn back on the photo textures and I think we have as much context as we need right now. So that is uh, the procedure that we use for adding some roads to the model. What I'm gonna cover next is a procedure for adding roads to a model that is not on a flat site. Here we have a section of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I believe this is the Duquesne University campus, or at least part of it. There aren't a lot of flat sites in Pittsburgh. Um, so what we need to do here is deal with three-dimensional terrain. First thing you need to know how to do is to turn on the three-dimensional version of the terrain that comes in when you capture a snapshot. The best way to do that is to say File, 
geolocation, and show terrain. And you'll see that what actually came in on this version is uh, quite a three-dimensional version of that. Now, if you don't like to use the menus, what I suggest doing is going to View, Tool Palettes, or I think that's called Toolbars on Windows, and turning on the Google uh, little toolbar set. And you'll notice there's a button here, and I think it's probably called something like Toggle Terrain. If I click that button, I'm toggling between the flat and the 3D versions of that terrain. But what's actually happening when you're toggling that is that you're toggling between the two layers uh, that were imported when you did that. So watch, as I click this button, you'll see that those layers are getting switched. The terrain is the 3D one, and the snapshot is the 2D one. So it's really important to understand that when you're doing this. Let's just toggle that so it's 3D again. Now what I've done in this model already is I've already brought in all the buildings I need. So let's just go ahead and turn on the buildings. Those are the buildings that I found really easily in the 3D warehouse. Um, but what I want to do at this point is I want to trace some of these roads and hardscape on the campus. We can imagine that we're doing a hypothetical project here or someplace in this kind of quad area right there. For that, I think what I'll do is I'll actually turn off uh, the photo buildings like this, and I want to trace the roads. I want to trace the roads on a 2D version of this, so I'll toggle that terrain so that I'm looking at a two-dimensional version. And I'm going to go ahead and i am just use the line and the arc and whatever other tools I need to just trace this in 2D. Now, I already did that for the sake of time. I'll just turn on the layer I put that on here. If I go up to my styles, you'll be able to see what I did a little better. If I turn this on hidden line, that's the piece of hardscape that I actually just drew manually. And right here it's flat, but of course in 3D um, it needs to be mapped to that three-dimensional surface. So let's do that now. Go back to my shaded with textures here. Let's turn this on. And now I think I'm going to dive right into the layers and, uh, and do some things. So this is what I'm going to do. Let's go to layers. I'm going to turn off that two-dimensional snapshot version of the terrain. There we go. And I'm going to turn on the 3D version, terrain, right there. There's the terrain. I think what I'd like to do is actually make a white copy of that terrain, just so that I'm not uh, sort of distracted by the, by the imagery. And this is how I'll do that. I'll just click on it. Now, actually, ordinarily, uh, it's locked just like this. So it would look red locked like this. To unlock it, you right click and say unlock until its bounding box is blue. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up and say edit. I'm going to say copy. It'll copy it, and now I'll go paste in place right there. And with that copy, what I'd like to do is put that on. Oops, I lost my palette. Well, this is actually a good time to show you another little tip. If I lose a palette because I change resolution or go double screen or something like that, I can go to SketchUp Preferences on the Mac or under Window Preferences on a Windows machine. And right here under Workspace, I'm going to say Reset Workspace. That takes away all my windows, but when I go to try and get something that was formerly lost, it'll actually put it right there in the upper right corner where I expect to find it. Okay, so that is, of course, the duplicate of the terrain that I made. Let's go Layer. I want to put that on my Context Massing Layer right there. Okay, so nothing really appeared to happen. Let's go back up and get Layers again. There's that. Make this a little bigger so we can see what's going on. Actually, let's make it big enough that we can see the text. And I'm actually just going to turn off the terrain layer right now. I'm going to go back to massing. And you'll see that I already made massing versions of all the buildings. I just turned them white and made their edges a little more visible. And this is the version of the 3D terrain snapshot that's in color. Let's uh, make that white. So let's just double click on it. I'm going to select that surface. Make sure that hidden geometry is not turned on at this point. If it is, this won't work. We need to select this so it's just one nice big surface. We'll get the Paint Bucket tool. Choose that default color and click on it once. Let's get rid of colors. And you'll see that I now have a white version of that terrain that I can use. I think what I'll do at this point is... Um, yeah, I think I'll map the roads and then cut the buildings into the terrain. So let's do that. The roads, even though they're on their own layer, are actually also just a group. I'm going to take the Move tool. I'm going to move them up, up in the blue direction, so that they're hovering over this terrain object that I just turned white. All right. Now what tool I need uh, is called... The tool I need is called Drape. Now, 
Drape is part of the Sandbox toolset. Depending on what version of SketchUp you're using, it will either be activated or not activated. So let's do another little piece of education. If I go up here to Tools, at the very bottom of the menu I'll see Sandbox and there's a Drape tool right there. If you don't see the Sandbox tools, it means they haven't actually been turned on. All copies of SketchUp, I think from 7 on, Pro and Make or Free, depending on what version you're using, have the Sandbox tools. They're just not always activated. So we're going to go up, in this case, to Preferences again. That's under the SketchUp menu or the Windows menu, right there. And I'm going to go to Extensions, and I need to scroll through this list and make sure that those Sandbox tools are turned on. If that's not checked, you won't see them. Make sure they're checked. As soon as you check it, it'll actually turn them on and you should be able to see them again under Sandbox Drape. So I'm just going to activate that tool. Let's go Drape. And I get this little thing that I can pick groups with. Now what this does is it lets me pick one group and then pick another group and it automatically uses the top group to cut the bottom group. So I'm basically cutting those edges directly into that bottom thing. So I'll turn off my little tracing layer here and you'll see that the 2D stuff, the flat thing that I traced goes away. And lo and behold, I actually have those roads cut directly into the three-dimensional version of the white terrain that I made just like that. Okay, let's actually go into this terrain object again. I'm going to double click. Let's select all of this. And I'm going to right click and say intersect faces with model. And this is actually just going to get all those edges where the buildings poke through the terrain um, to appear as well. So let's just double click or just single click out of there. It looks like this, this little edge didn't come in. No worries, I can go into the building. Actually, you know what? The reason it didn't... No, nope. I don't know why it didn't come in, but let's just do this. We'll double click on that building. We're going to right click on the surface and say intersect faces with model. And now I get that edge. I may have to do that in a couple of other circumstances as well. With model, into here, intersect faces with model, you get the idea. Through a few simple steps like that, you can actually end up with exactly what you're looking for. Here we are back in the original project we were working on. This is the parking lot site in Denver. I've got those roads drawn in. I think what I'd like to do though is substitute a big white ground plane in to go with my white model versions. I just opened layers and turned back on that context building's massing layer. I don't want this photograph based uh, ground plane though because it doesn't, it, you know, it's not going to work. So what I need to do is just turn off that, that uh, layer. You'll notice that there's two layers that come in by default every time you add a location to SketchUp. Google Earth Snapshot and Google Earth Terrain. I'm going to click off the one that's currently on and you'll see that that layer will go away quite nicely. All right, let's put away this layer. Let's put that away just like this. Now, um, before I draw that ground plane, I think what I'll do is I'm going to select all my streets and group them. In that case, I just selected everything. It's easier to select everything and then deselect the buildings than it is to just try and pick and choose the street edges that I want. So we've got that. Let's just right click on this and say make myself a group consisting of those streets. And now I'll get the rectangle tool and I'm just going to draw a rectangle kind of goes the extent of the, the, the site that I want. In this case I'm just going to arbitrarily say that it's about this big. Now that thing came in backside up, white side down, because SketchUp does that so that when you extrude something it actually flips it inside out. It's kind of a long story. If you want the white side up, in this case all you have to do is right click on that and say reverse face and that is now white side up. While I'm at it, I'm also going to take that whole ground plane that I just drew and turn that into a group as well. I like to keep things nice and separate. So I've got my street edges, I've got this group. Everything is easy to pick and easy to hide and show if I want it to. If I dive in here, you'll see that I'm running into a similar problem that I had before on that other context building where I don't have an intersection line between this building and uh, the ground there. See, the building is actually penetrating the ground right there. So I'm going to use the same trick to solve that problem, but I'm going to do it on the ground plane instead of on the model. Here, let's take this rectangle. I'll double click on it to dive into it. I'll click on that rectangle, right click, and say intersect faces 
with model in this case, and it's going to draw in ground edges wherever the building models intersect with that ground. Now, it didn't draw one over here because that model is actually not intersecting with the ground plane. It, maybe it should be, but it doesn't visually look wrong to me, so I'm going to sort of let, slip, let sleeping dogs lie. So I've got a ground plane in there. I think what I'll do next is add some street names. Uh, I personally like to put those into site models because I think it's easier to orient yourself when, when that's uh, done. And I think it's kind of an interesting lesson in using the 3D text tool. So let's go back to Google Earth and exit Street View. I'm just going to take a look at what these streets are actually supposed to be called. Now, am I getting street names is the question. No, I'm not getting any street names, so I need to turn on a layer over here. I'm going to turn on borders and labels. And let's see if the street names come in that I want. Did that work? Nope, maybe I need to turn on f roads. There we go. There's a roads layer. There we go. This is California Street, it looks like. Um, 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 um. Does appear. Oh, here we go. California Street. Sometimes it doesn't put them exactly where you think you're going to go. And this is 15th Street right here, crossing. So let's go back to my model and uh, throw those in. So this is, if I recall, California Street. I think I'll go up to my tools and I'll go up to 3D text right here. And I'm just going to type in what I'm interested in. In this case, I can maybe choose a font. I'll go with good old Arial because, you know, everybody has it. We'll go regular. Maybe I'll say bold. And I'll just get rid of that. I'm going to type in California Street right there. In this case, I don't want the text to be extruded or three-dimensional. I don't feel like that's necessary. So I'll just untick that and say place. Now what's happened is it doesn't look like I've got anything on my cursor, but that's just because these letters are 10 inches high by default. If I zoom in and zoom in and zoom in, you'll see that I, I actually did get the text I want. It's just a little smaller than I was expecting. So in this case, I'll just set it down right there. I'm going to switch to my scale tool. Um, it's right here on the palette, just like that. I can click on that, or I could hit S on my keyboard, or I could go to Tools, Scale. And I want to scale it. If I want to scale it uniformly about the center, I can hold down a key on my keyboard. On a Mac, it's Command. Oh, I'm sorry, it's Option on a Mac. It's probably Control on the Windows. I'm just going to bring that out, sort of like this. And you'll notice that as I move around, you see that Z flashing? That's called Z fighting right there. It's because the color of the letters is um, actually different from the color of the road, and it's coincidence, coplanar, I mean, it flashes, and that's, I find that very annoying, actually. So the first thing I'm going to do is double-click on that new component, and I'm going to reverse all of these letter faces. Let's get rid of that. Here we go. We reverse these faces just like this. And we'll just right click on that and say reverse faces so we've got exactly what we want. And now what I want to do is actually pick that up off the ground a little ways. Uh, the reason I want to pick it up off the ground is just because I think it's more interesting when it's kind of just floating a little bit. You may want to do this as well so I'll show you how. If I select this and then I get my move tool and I try to move it up in the blue direction, you'll notice that I can't. I can't move it up at all. I'll hit escape to stop moving. The reason for that is 3D text when you first create it is what's called glued to the surface that you put it on. So I have to right click and say unglue first. That detaches it from the background or from the, the ground plane. Now I can get my move tool and actually move it up in the blue direction. I'm going to move it up just six inches in this case, just like that. So that looks good. The trouble is now when I have shadows turned on like this, uh, let's turn on the shadows and kind of sweep this a little ways like that. You'll notice that the, the road name is actually casting a shadow and I think that's probably undesirable. I think that's an effect I don't really need. Well, that's relatively simple to fix as well, believe it or not. Over here in Entity Info, right there, if I select that road name and I expand the Entity Info dialog box, you'll see that I have options for cast shadows and receive shadows for this object. 
So let's actually tell it not to cast shadows there. Now it's not casting a shadow. And the problem that I want to fix this time, if I go back up to my shadows, where they go, oh, they were hiding behind, like this, is I don't really want the street name to be in shadow either. I'd like that street name to sort of sit as a, as a graphic. So in that case, I'm just going to select don't receive shadows either. Just like that. And now it neither casts nor receives shadows, and it happens to look good just about all of the time. So we'll go over here. I think I'll turn off my shadows for now. Turn off Entity Info. Put that away and take a look. I'm going to go ahead and add some more street names into this and come right back. I've added some streets to the model. There are three things I'd like to cover in this last part of the video. Number one, I'm going to show you the reason that we chose to paint these buildings with the default material instead of just white or gray or some other, some other thing like that. Number two, I'm going to set up scenes that makes it really easy to toggle back and forth between the photo textured versions of, these, of this model and the, uh, and the white version of the model. And third, I'm going to use scenes to, to show you how to do a simple shadow study on this model. So let's jump right in. Okay, you'll recall that when we were in here painting these entire models, I recommended that you use the paint bucket to use this default material. The reason we did that was there's kind of a neat trick in SketchUp that you can do. Uh, if everything inside of a group or component is painted with the default material. Watch this. If I take the paint bucket and I say, I don't know, hypothetically, let's say my building or whatever I do on this site is actually going to call for the demolition of these two buildings. Well, I'll go over here to my colors. I'm just going to maybe pick a red to indicate demolish. Uh, and I can just go ahead and click on the buildings that I want to color red. Now, the reason this works is I'm basically coloring the component instance red, and then any material that's inside, which is the default material, will automatically also turn red. So let me show you what happens if that weren't the case. If I go in here to this uh, component, and I select the whole thing, and instead of having it be um, white, I chose to paint it a beige color or something like that, maybe yellowish like this. Now when I come out here, and I choose red for my color, and I drop red on that component, you'll see nothing happens. Click, click, click. And the reason for that is even though the component knows it's red, the individual faces inside are yellow. And, um, and, and the red won't override the yellow because it's not the default material. All I have to do if I've accidentally used white instead of the default material is select everything, get the paint bucket, go back to that default material. Let's kind of scroll, scroll, scroll. Let's go default material paint that on and you'll see instead of turning white it turns red because it's picking up the default color for this component instance. It's a little complicated but um, I think it's worth mentioning because it's a nice little trick. In this case I can I can do other things diagrammatically with these buildings too. I could say you know these two are key and this building is of particular interest because maybe it serves as a precedent for what I blah 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 something like that in which case I I might just color it in blue something like that. Okay let's undo that blue Let's do something else right now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use scenes to make it really quick to switch between views of this site model. So let's open up layers, just like this. I've got my layers there. It shows which layers are showing. Um, in this case, my ground plane and my streets are both on my layer 0, I think. They're probably on this layer 0. I'd actually like to make a new model. You know what? Actually, I'm just going to put them on this context buildings massing layer because I think that'll simplify things. So let's just move them onto that layer like that. Close up entity info. I'm going to go up to window and scenes. And the scenes dialog box is pretty critical here. I'm going to click this to expand just like that. Now I'm going to get this showing the layers, exactly the layers that I want to show. So I don't want the photorealistic. I don't want anything from Google Earth. In this case, I really just wanted to show the context building's massing layer and my layer zero. So I'm going to go up here and I'm going to say add a scene. It's going to complain about the styles that I have. When this dialog box pops up, I find that the easiest thing to do is just to save as a new style and deal with the styles later. So we'll say create scene. I um, I don't find it that handy to see these thumbnails all the time, so I'm going to change to a 
list view of my scenes, but I am going to rename that scene and call it massing, just like this. All right. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the scene or the layers, I'm sorry, that are visible. I'm going to say, you know what? I really want to see my uh, terrain and I want to see the photorealistic versions of those buildings. That'll take a few seconds to appear because it's having to render the photo textures. There we go. Uh, I noticed that I accidentally forgot to put those street names oops, on that other layer as well. Ah, come on. In this case, oh, they're actually below it, so I better pick it from below. There we go. All right, so once I've got those three street names selected, I can move them to the proper layer as well. They're going to go on the massing layer, which is hidden, so they disappear when I put them on that layer. Okay, more importantly, that is the photorealistic version of my site model. I'm going to go up and add a new scene, and I'm going to call this scene something like photo, and hit enter. And you'll notice what happened when I did that. I created a couple of scene tabs so that when I click on this thing, it's toggling back and forth. But do you notice how the camera position is actually changing? So let's say we're out here, or I had done some sort of an intervention. I had done something over here. Uh, in this case, I've got a three-dimensional version of that terrain turned on, so it's not easy to model on top of it. But you get the idea. Let's say I had something here, and um, I wanted to uh, just quickly flip back to a massing version of this thing. If I click back on my massing thing, it actually rotates the whole scene again. That bothers me. There's a neat thing you can do inside of scenes. Hmm, I don't want to generate thumbnails for this. I'm just going to say cancel. It's a very neat thing. Uh, you need to pay attention to it if you're kind of an advanced SketchUp user. I can save which properties I want to save with each scene. In this case, I do not want the camera location to be remembered as part of the photo scene. By the same token, I don't want the camera location to be remembered for the massing scene either. So if I close up that scenes thing and I fly around and switch to photo, you'll see that switching on, clicking on that scene tab no longer changes my camera position. It actually just changes the layers which are active. So that's kind of a really nice way to work with this kind of a model because um, you don't always want to change your camera position every time you want to change which version of the, of the site model you're looking at. Finally, let's do a little shadow study here. This is really simple. We're going to go to Shadow Settings, and we're going to turn on Shadows and say that, you know, in the summertime, let's say right around the solstice, so June 20th-ish, something like this, in the morning, the shadows look like this. This is at 6.22 a.m. I'm just going to go up here to my scenes, and I'm going to add a new scene and call that morning. Morning, summer. How about that? And then I'm just going to scrub my shadows over to the evening, let's say, just like this, Doop, right there. That's 6.01 p.m. Let's just add a new scene, just like this, and we'll call it evening, summer, and enter. Now it's split up my scenes up here. That bothers me a little, so I'll just go over here and select this and move this guy up so that they're kind of grouped together the way I want them to be. And notice that the camera location property is not saved for morning and evening either. And that's fine because probably I want the same thing to happen. I want to be able to do a shadow study no matter what view I'm looking at of the model. So I'll save everything else except those. I'll turn off the scenes. And then no matter where I am in the model, when I click on morning, you'll see those shadows moving across. Let's go evening. And this is exactly how they work. All right. If for some reason you wanted that to take longer, like let's say you wanted the transition between those scenes to happen a little slower, let's go up to Window, Model Info, and then right here under the Animation heading, which is the very first tab in this dialog box, I'm going to change the transition time to let's say five seconds between those scenes. We'll close that. And now when I click on these scenes, well, it should be taking five seconds. Let's see what happened. Oops. You know what happened? I didn't say enter. Let's click enter. And now when I click on this, 
it'll take a whole lot longer to move between. All right, that was uh, a little tutorial about how to make a digital site model using resources that you can find on Google Earth and Google Maps in SketchUp to uh, quickly figure out a site if you don't happen to be there or if you're running on a short deadline. Thanks very much. Have fun.